my apologies, I forgot to actually look at the time, so now I can make sure I don't do this for too long. I don't think it will take me over 30 minutes to go through my stuff, but if it does, I'll be stopping early because, god damn it, you guys don't want to be seeing over 30 minutes of me playing a card game. Especially since I'm not even fucking sure what I'm going to be saying half of this time. I'm actually very concerned walking into this. Anyway, since this is technically the first episode of Let's Waste Time Animation Throwdown the Quest for Cards. For those of you guys that don't know what this is, this is, well, Animation Throwdown the Quest for Cards. It is a card game for Android and iOS. And basically, it's... You know what? I'm not gonna compare it to another game because people who compare it to other card games are fucking idiots. It's just a card game in which you get a deck based off of one of five shows. Those shows being Family Guy, Futurama, Bob's Burgers, American Dad, and, um... Futurama, American Dad, Bob's Burgers, Family Guy. Oh, and King of the Hill. With the when the game starts, um, Professor, I mean not Prof, is it Professor or Doctor? I believe it's Professor. Professor Fonsworth has well the you the player working as his assistant, and he has you press a button, but apparently you press the wrong button. And the machine ends up combining all five of these worlds' universes, turning their universes into little land masses floating throughout time itself. Time, the universe, fabric of reality. I don't know how to put it. Point is, you fuck shit up royally. And afterwards, you and Peter go on a short little mission to find out what the hell is going on, where are you, and do they have beer there? You later find out where you are is some weird nebulous space in which you play card games with each other. And they do not sell bear here, sadly. <laughs> so after fighting a few people, you get into the actual game, which is just... Beating up random fuck. Wait, why didn't that trigger? Hold up. Oh! It's rich cards adjacent to this card. That's fucking stupid. Okay, I'm probably not gonna be able to explain this later, but these things here are abilities, and those abilities will trigger during battle under certain conditions. The motivate skill is normally one of the better skills in the game because it will power up the people on both of your sides. But if there's a star above motivate, that means there's a specific condition needed for it to activate. And that condition is usually being from the same show, but in this case, it's not being from the same show, it's being rich. Which is fucking stupid. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, I was explaining this game. So, um, yeah. With the information that you and Peter find out, you, um, then gain access to the game itself, which allows you to play card games with different characters from the series. With four characters from each series being playable as deck masters, and a lot of other car um, people and things from series being cards. Here are the deck masters of the game. I could name them off by uh, off the top of my head, but the way I see it, there's no reason to when I can show you guys. So the deck masters are Bobby Hill, who is actually the first deck master on my list because he's the one I start off the game with. And if you're wondering, no, I'm not a King of the Hill fan. I actually care very little for King of the Hill. The reason I chose Bobby Hill as my starting character was because of the starting characters, he was the one I liked the most. I love Futurama, but I hate Leela. I love Family Guy, but I hate Brian. I'm indifferent to Bob's Burgers, but part of me regrets not choosing Bob. But even then, Bobby's honestly a better character than Bob, but that's beside the point. And, um... Fuck, what was the last starting character again? Oh yeah, I like American Dad, but Roger can kiss my ass. 
So yeah, of all the characters, Bobby was the one I liked the most, even though his show is the one I liked the least. So yeah, Bobby, then Stewie's the first one you unlock, then there's Louise, then Steve, then Bender, who is the one that I'm currently using, then Dale, then Brian, then Bob, who again is one of the starting characters. So at this point, you're unlocking all starting characters, then Roger, then Leela, then Peter, who actually isn't a starting character, then Tina, then Stan, then Fry, and then Hank Hill. So basically all of the main characters and Tina Belcher, for some reason, are the last characters you can unlock in the game. I don't understand why Tina's here and Bob is the big- Oh wait, no, actually I do understand that. Because, let me- let me check something real quick. Four, four- oh, never mind. At first, I thought all of the starting characters had the same HP. But, apparently not- not correct in my assumption, so... Yeah, I have no clue how they choose the starting characters. Oh, also, whoever you clicked last is going to become your character. And as you've probably noticed as I shifted through all of them, each character has their different starting HP and abilities. And you also probably notice a number beneath the character. The number beneath the character tells you what level the character is. That's right, your character can level up and level- well, not level down, but they can level up throughout the game. By winning online matches and basically getting lucky. So I have a level 4 bender. And level 4 Bender's fucking good, so he is my deck master. Because Bender just has a naturally high HP. Probably because he's a robot. And yes, I do think the HP does have to do with the physical standing of your character. Because Louise Felcher, who is a little girl with a bunny hat in Bob's Burgers, she has the worst HP in the game. Which she should, since she is a fucking 12-year-old, so... Yeah. Die, Klaus. No, Klaus, you were supposed to die. I suppose while I'm in this match, I'll explain these. These field effects... When field effects essentially affect the field for a certain amount of time, that time can be figured out in the main menu because it will actually tell you how many more days certain field effects will, well, be in effect. The current field effects, which I just clicked on so you should have seen them, are On the House and Costume Party. On the House makes it so that all drunk cards will heal at the end of the turn. And Costume Party makes it so that all, um... Wait, what? Oh, that sucks! Um, for those of you who aren't aware, they recently added this challenge thing. And it looks like they actually changed the prices. Originally, everything here was the same except for the Loathing Chance Pack. That was 50 when I first bought one, but now it's 75. So it looks like when they fixed glitches, they also upped that price, which sucks, personally. Then again, this package kind of sucks in general. You'll see here you can get anything ranging from a legendary card. Yes, purple cards are legendary. Blue is... Um, epic. Green is rare, and white's uncommon. I mean, not uncommon, commons. But yeah, the first time I got one, I got, I got, um, Slurm, which pissed me off, because, like, really, of all the fucking things you can give me, give me the goddamn, ugh. Hmm. I honestly just came here to see if I can get this yet, but I need 50 points, and I currently have 32. Damn it. Okay. Anyway, let's check the time. I have about 8 minutes left, so... Yeah, I can do eight. I'm pretty sure I can do this in eight. Interesting thing about the start of every battle. At the start of every battle, you'll get little dialogues between each character, which is... Every character has, like, four sets of dialogue. Two for each character towards the other character. Um... 
that car will attack me, so I'll start. Oh god, Bender has a better payback ability, actually. I should have been Bender, that was very stupid of me. I'm a stupid person. Ooh, perfect. So how this game works is each turn you can play one card. There are two types of cards. There are people cards, and there are event slash item slash reference cards. They aren't called the different types of cards, but I call them it because I feel that's just the best way to explain it. People cards can combine with different event slash item slash reference cards to form powerful combinations. Each turn you can either play one card, doesn't matter if it's a person event or a reference but you get to play one card each with a team and after you play your card for that turn any card that wasn't played that turn specifically will then automatically attack what's in front of it if there's a card in front of it it'll attack that card and do its attack damage to their hp if it has more attack that card dies if it has the same attack, that card dies. If it has less attack, the card simply takes damage. If there is no card in front of them, or if your card has more attack than the card in front of you's leftover HP, you will then attack the other person's character directly. Also, I just realized that person's a level 5 level. slightly concerning. Okay, um... Uh, who do I want to fight, Leela? I don't want to put Boomhauer because I want Boomhauer to be my next person out. I don't want to fight put the teddy bear because I want the teddy bear to be in center. Okay, I'll put Fry, I guess. I'm probably just overthinking things now because normally I don't strategize that much. Oh god, I didn't realize she- Wow, I'm an idiot. I didn't realize that Leela had that chair ability. If I knew she had that chair ability, I would have put somebody with payback in, in Fry's slot. But since I didn't put someone with payback in Fry's slot, Fry just took damage without really doing anything of use. But yeah, on your turn, anybody that was already played pre before will get to attack. And they will either attack the card in front of them, or they will attack your opponent. If they attack the card in front of them, similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! when it comes to attacking an attack position monster, you will essentially take damage based on the difference. And... Words. Alright. When you take your opponent's life down to zero, you win. Also, I should probably explain these buttons up here, but I'm not actually going to click them. Actually, I can click this one. There is this button here, which will change the speed at which the game goes. And... There is this button here, which will activate autoplay. I'm taking that off right now, because I don't want to be in autoplay. But you can have it in autoplay when you're facing somebody weak, or so that doesn't matter. And it'll just make life slightly easier for you. And down goes Leela. At the end of each match, you'll get rewards specified by whatever you're on. And this is actually how you level up car- not, not cards, characters. When you beat a online battle, you will get- you have the chance of dropping the character's little token things. And those token things will basically let the character get ever so stronger as they level up. The tokens are basically experience. And I'm getting really close to the 30 minute mark, so this battle against Bob's gonna be the last one I show. Especially since I've been rambling for far too- actually... Wait, no, I started at 10. And it's currently... 27. I technically have 13 minutes before we hit the 30 minute mark, so... I do actually still have a bit of time left. I'm trying to make sure I don't overdo it, because I've never done a card game before. And, as you guys already know, I'm not too great at commentary, so... I honestly don't want to end up being too boring for all of you. 
After all, my job is to entertain, not annoy. Um... Say, so yeah, there's that surrender button up there, it's the red flag you see there. I'm not going to click that because obviously I don't want to surrender. And honestly, this is basically all there is to the game. Alright, and it's, in case you haven't noticed, Bender, just like the cards, also has an ability. Also has abilities. So yes, as you level up your hero, your hero can become just as, if not even more important than the cards themselves because of the abilities that come with their characters. Especially when it comes to deciding whether you want to make a show-based deck or not. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but one of Bob's abilities, his heal ability, had a star by it. That's because Bob is a character that specifically works better with Bob's Burgers based decks. Bender also falls into this category. He works best with Futurama based decks, unsurprisingly. But I still find Bender to be more useful because he has Cripple All, which is honestly an amazing ability to have. Plus, like, Futurama cards were actually some of the first cards I got. The first card I got was actually um, a King of the Hill based deck because, again, I started off with Bobby. God dang it, Bobby. That boy ain't right, I tell you what. <sighs> but just for the luck of the draw, or lack of luck, I suppose, the first set of cards I re the first cards I really drew happened to be. Um, Futurama cards. So they just ended up going well with Bender once I got them. I almost surrendered. Apparently that play stop button thing is surrender. I don't know why that would be surrender, but apparently it's surrender. So we have two surrender buttons for some reason. I'm sorry guys, I'm rambling so much that I'm trying to like ramble less because let's be honest here, me saying random crap is not good commentary. <laughs> so I'm trying to calm myself down so what I do say is actually meaningful. Oh, and for those of you who haven't noticed, you can actually see what the rewards are for the next thing right here. And you can actually reset like re-choose to get new a new chance and a new opponent if you so please i won't do that because i don't feel like wasting 100 coins so we'll just quickly finish these up maybe do a minor amount of adventure mode grinding and then we'll do a pack opening for how much ever packs i can afford how much ever free game currency packs I can afford, I mean, because I don't have actual money. And I won't have actual money until you guys give me money. And I assume you guys have no intention of giving me money. And if you do have an intention of giving me money, thank you. I love you very much. I love you long time. Okay, I lied. I, I never loved you guys. I'm actually looking for the money. I be oh, never mind. I thought I could combine that with Boom Power. Oh, and for those of you who haven't noticed, when I was explaining the rules, I stated that a card can't attack if it was played that turn. This rule only applies if it's a single play card. If the card you're putting down is actually a combination of two cards, then it will not count to that and you will be able to play it nonetheless. So, that's well. I suppose I could go over the abilities, but that would slow down my playing. I'll go over the abilities in another episode, because this episode is already going to be getting really close to my 
self-given limit. Also, another little fun thing to notice is that the background will match the show if whoever in um, battle modes. That's swell. Oh, and if you're wondering what that card is that my opponents keep playing, random epic card there, that thing that says Bender's Defense, that is something specifically added to um, 2v2 multiplayer, but not really multiplayer mode, so that it's actually fair, because let's be real, human players will always be better than computer players. So, the Blank's defense card is added there with no attack and a nerfed version of the character's abilities to make sure that player v player matches are just as difficult for the human as it is for the computer. Because look at this, this Spender was clearly better than me, but like level wise this bender was clearly stronger than me but i'm still the one with the massive advantage when it comes to actual field presence because i'm a human i know what i'm doing this bender has yet to make any form of combination but i decided to take a little bit of damage and start so i can get immediate field present and immediate domination of the opponent also i have no clue there's a limit to how many cards you can have on the field if I don't, no, I'm going to kill him. I was going to say if I don't kill him, we can find out, but <laughs> I killed him, so. I assume the max is six. I don't think I've ever had more than six. Luckily, I think I had seven. I don't know it. All I know is that it's six or more. So uh, you can just have six or more cars in the field at once. That usually won't happen until you reach a Far, far later in the game, though. Hmm. No, don't overthink things, Dwayne. You're gonna win. <laughs> I was almost strategizing for a second there because when your cards on the verge, of, that's the best time to actually combine them because then you get to pull yourself out of a situation and kill your opponent's card and just all around gain the advantage at that point. At least that's how most people play it. But me, I just make a co powerful combination at the start. And then from there, I'll just slowly would destroy their first few cards, causing them to keep playing those spots while I line up the defense cards they have attacking, and then combine those to gain even more powerful field presence. And since my cards at the start are always either crazed cards or boxing cards, not only do I have the immediate advantage, but that card at the start is either getting crazed, which means they're getting stronger over time, or they're a boxer, so they get to punch things ahead while chilling back there doing nothing. Like, here's a perfect example. Yes, I am technically giving up attacks on me by doing this, but I am deciding to get, get Peggy here drunk, gain the crazed ability, crazed two to be exact, which means every turn she gets plus E. So for these first two turns, I'm gonna be taking some damage. But that's fine, because I can slowly put people in front to block the damage while my crazed Peggy gets stronger and stronger and stronger and essentially becomes the Incredible Hulk over time. And this isn't good, actually.
actually. Oh wait, never mind. Never mind. Yes, I'm taking some good damage at the start here, but this could be worth it, assuming I live long enough to gain the benefits. I'm not going to, because normally by this point I would have killed one of their first two cards. But since I'm dealing with double, um... Since I'm dealing with double nerfs in the form of Bender's... Bender's, um, Cripple All and Bender's Defenses Cripple, I'm actually probably about to get fucked. Especially since this person has this game's, um, equivalent of an event card in the form of Drunk Fry. Yeah, I actually lost. Because this golden poop has more attack than I thought it would. It looks like they actually combine it well enough to make that golden poop a decent attacker. Normally, I would just play my golden poop and protect myself from Fry and I'd be able to win. But, sadly, because my thing didn't pay off for once, the one time I need to pay off, it doesn't, making me look like a damn fool. <laughs> Because it didn't pay off like it normally would, partially thanks to Drunk Fry, and partially because I just suck. These guys are going to be able to kill me by this poop attacking me here. And as much as I want to make excuses, there are no excuses to be made, I just suck. Now, I don't normally lose. You can believe- you can disbelieve me if you want, that's fine, think I'm shit, but... Normally, I win these. Normally, everybody wins these, but... You know, sometimes shit doesn't go right. Normally, I would have one powerful card that takes out the first card, turn two or turn three. And then I'd be able to place things to defend myself while the powerful card just controls everything. But that time it didn't work out because it took too long to take out the first cards. It normally doesn't take that long at all. And the first cards are usually gone in a very swift manner. This time around, though, my strategy should work because this person doesn't have cripple, so I can just decimate, and now it's already starting. Next turn, the wine battle will get killed, and at that point, everything in the front is getting killed immediately, while my my front will continue to grow. Unless Lois's piano says nay. And I think Lois' piano is indeed going to say nay. By my mother's mandible, I say nay! I don't know why I said that. See, this is what happens when you just say random shit in the, for the sake of commentary. This is, the, this, this is why commentary is bad. You will say the most ridiculous shit for no fucking reason and you will just sound like a goddamn tool. <laughs> <sighs> but I only have one more match to go before this is done. So, yeah, the 30 minutes has passed. So I'll tell you guys what, I'll do a pack opening, and then I'll end the episode off there. So let's go to the shop. Gems cost money, that's why you guys will never see me on the featured. Not unless you guys donate, um, Google Play coupons to me. And call me crazy, but I doubt you'll be doing that. Anyway... There are only two options with the in-game currency. Buy one random card, or buy as many random cards as your coins allows. I always just build it up for the day and then choose as many cards as my coins allow. Originally, I thought this would give you better picks, but it doesn't, honestly. Yours will always be shit. I was just very lucky the first two times I did a mass buy. See? I wasn't lucky, because the strongest thing I got was a rare. The first times I bought max packs, I got an epic and I got a legendary, so I assumed it was luckier, but it really isn't. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.